Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the phantom behind the curtain this evening. Welcome back to Echo Arena Veer on our channel one. We've got some exciting matchups here for you today. And though you cannot see my face, I am psychotic. And with me in the booth that you can see is Jeep Girls and Offbeat. And of course, Wonder Team Man on the cams. Jeep Girls, Offbeat, how are y'all doing? And somebody tell me about this first match. Oh, you know what? I'm doing fantastic. This is going to be a fun match. We have Eterna over on the orange side and Cicada. 3301 on the blue side. This is gonna be this is gonna be a good one. Offbeat, how you feeling about it? He's so excited <laughs> that he is speechless, guys. Let me tell you, as soon as we got in the booth tonight, Offbeat was like, guys, this Eterna and Cicada match, I can't, I can't, I can't. He just can't. He just can't even right yeah. now. And that's okay. We'll give him a second to remember how to even. <laughs> All right, well, coming in on Cicada, we have Mo, Chicken, Orb, and Epic Evo. And over on Eterna, we've got Katara, Boombox, LA, and Vortex. And this is going to be a fantastic one as we are ready to jump right in. Yes, and uh, I guess while Offbeat is still collecting himself, <laughs> I will go ahead and kick off this match here. And away we go. The doors are open, and the first touch looks like, yes, indeed, Cicada coming through strong with that headbutt all the way down into the bubble. And that is Epic looking for an Epic shot. Just not quite going to find it there. Recovered by Orb, though, so they'll keep the possession. No, just kidding. Vortex bringing the heat there with the stun, the steal, and the clear. Offbeat, are you here? Uh, more or less, more or less, as, yeah, it's down into the blue zone, uh, looking for it. No, no one, not able to collect that one, and it will be scooped a hill by Eterna. Uh, Eterna moving in, they've got the numbers, can they get it before the Evas goes back? No, Chicken! What a save, getting that cleared up to the mid. Not out of danger, though, so, uh, Chicken, best be on your, best be alert again, because here they come. No, Orb is gonna shut him down. Still, not able to get it out. And that's gonna be a nice clear by Mo right back to the midfield, but Katara is there to pick it up and return it right back down to Vortex. Vortex moving into the bubble, gonna get stolen away by Mo. Not quite the clear they were looking for though as Katara picks it up again. Yep, Katara picking it up, not quite gonna find the angle though. Two shots off the ding ring, but LA is still on it here for Eterna. Sending it back to Katara, now down low cross, finding Boombox, but Boombox still not quite finding the goal. Vortex with a momentary pickup there, but Epic Evo is all over them, getting the stun and the steal. Not quite the clear, but it looks like with a little help from Orb, Cicada is going to set up for this possession. Yep, and that's going to be Epic Evo, Evo on the floor right now, with that is moving right into the midfield area. Just kind of taking their time, drawing out Boombox a little bit. Going to send that one all the way up into the hands of Orb. Orb is going to look for the pass. Going to send it across the arena to Mo. Going to send it back again as Orb picks it up. Ready to head it in, but gonna first send it back to Chicken. Yeah, more than a minute and a half gone. Still waiting for the first points of the game here. A couple stuns come now. Good defensive work from Eterna. And oh, another good steal coming in. Very, very close. That was a dangerous opportunity uh, for Cicada, but not able uh, to close the deal. Two minutes gone now in this first round. Still waiting for our first points. That is going to be Boombox moving up to LA. LA looking, sending it a high. No one there, but that is a dangerous rebound. Right back in the hands of Boombox. Moves up with a shot. And there it is. Two minutes in. Two points on the board for Eterna. Yeah, that took us a hot minute to find our first points there. Uh, two of them, actually, if you're counting along at home. And, you know, both teams had opportunities, which is the funniest thing. I think that was more dings in the first couple of volleys than I've ever seen before, but it does not matter. Eterna finally finds themselves on the board, and they have kicked us off here in round one. But here comes Cicada, now looking to answer back. That is Orb playing a calm, cool, and collected, looking to find Mo on through the tunnel. But LA is going to get there first instead, sending the long bounce shot off the ceiling, but Chicken on the back line gets the pickup instead. However, they're still not done. LA with another recovery here for Eterna looks to set up. Sending this one high up to Vortex above the shoulder. Vortex looking for that cross back. Uh, somehow manages to thread the needle between the two teammates. And that is going to allow Epic Evo to get there first and get the clear out for Cicada. And while Cicada is trying to get to it, as is Eterna, we do have a hydrate coming in from that one VR guy. Thank you so much. You guys make sure you take a drink for that one VR guy. Sending that one right into the bubble is going to be Boombox again. Coming in with another goal, uh, taking that lead to four. Yep, Excellent. good quick answer <laughs> coming in and an answer, of course, like back-to-back -back scores here. It took him a little bit to get going, but you know, usually in this game, once that first one goes in, uh, the floodgates can certainly open and Eterna uh, definitely with momentum in their favor at the moment as it is going to be sent down. And that is not the rollout they were looking for or fortunate to have collected that one off of the awkward bounce and is able to slow this one down as Cicada with some space are probably going to try and uh, see if they can't regroup and get a bit of a better rollout going forward here. 
Yep, they are looking for it here as Orb works this one up the arena, finding that cross over to Epic Evo. Epic pushing up into the bubble, but incoming stack is going to put a stop to that. Boombox gets the pickup here for Eterna, now sending this one through the close side tunnel. Bouncing cross, though, just outside the bubble of Cicada. This could be another opportunity if LA can get there first, and yes, he can. Now working his way into the bubble, looking for that cross back. Uh, not totally sure who the intended target was, but that is all the way through the tunnel. Oh no, a little mishandling there from Katara but they do get there in the end getting another pickup and the deep cross through it's going to bounce high connecting with LA there at the cloud gets through one defender sends that pass down low to Vortex and Vortex bringing the heat there putting it in for the two Eterna is going to go up by six you know, I'm watching them play, and, and Cicada is definitely very aggressive in the initial joust. They're just not getting back all the way for defense, and Eterna just keeps working that disc right down into the bubble. Six six points up halfway through the first round. Cicada with the joust advantage right now. They come out grabbing that disc as chicken, going to send it down through the tunnel and keep going, but it's going to be intercepted by Vortex and knocked right back into Vortex hands again. Sent back down into the blue end as they are racing to get to it. It's going to be Vortex who comes out with the disc with an open goal. Going to send that one to Katara and it is in and they take the eight point lead. Yeah, Eterna just winning that transition game at the moment. Getting the turnovers, getting them back the other way and just getting odd man rushes every single time back down in that blue bubble. And it's the points themselves, the goals themselves have been pretty easy uh, because they've put in all the legwork to set it up for themselves. And uh, you know that that hard work is paying off. The stacks are coming together quickly. They're moving fast and they're transitioning, recognizing, hey, we're on offense now and uh, getting their butts down the arena to set themselves up for some easier points. Yeah, this is definitely one of those games that is being decided in the mid. Because look, this is what we're talking about. Cicada has the ability to play this possession game. Oh, narrowly missing that shot. That is unfortunate. Um, it would have been a, a good capstone to my case study here. But look, they have this possession game. They're more than capable of playing the passes, playing the control. Just maybe not quite the shots just yet. Um, but, you know, it, they've got to find a way to get into the bubble, which I think is something that they have struggled with so far. And that's not something that Eterna has struggled with as they find another opportunity in the bubble. That's a one-on-none opportunity for Boombox and he will take full advantage of it, sinking in that two to get a turn up by 10. Yeah. Now, you know, we're watching, uh, Cicada currently is ranked bronze three and Eterna is gold four, but but this is not Cicada's first go around. Mo just recently brought this team back a couple of weeks ago, so they have quickly moved back up into the gold, the gold area here, and we're seeing we're seeing why their their stacks are on point. They're doing a great job getting that disc down there. Like you said, their shots just. They, they're gonna have to keep working on those shots, but right now Chicken with that goal, with a disc, gonna send it into Orb. Orb quickly gonna send it in, but it's gonna be saved by Katara and sent right back out again into the midfield. Yeah, Cicada, they haven't had a ton of chances so far this game, but in the last minute or so, they've had two short ones, uh, one dinging and then one big save, but they can't get it in. And that transition game, again, LA with the cap on that one, uh, extending that lead to 13-0 on an incredible transition, leading to an open goal. And even if that shot was missed, had all the teammates in the world around there uh, ready to put that one back in if needed. Yeah, that's one of those plays where you just feel really comfortable taking the shot because you know even if you don't have it, your teammates will. LA now looking for the encore, but this time will be denied by the Geo as that bounces back into the hands of Chicken. But Chicken not able to get the clear. Instead, that's Boombox picking it up and sending it to Katara. Katara looking to drive here, but denied by the defense, getting home just in time. But it is still not enough to keep a turner from scoring as Boombox gets the recollection in the middle of the chaos and puts in the two. My goodness, Jeep, we have two minutes remaining. And, you know, Eterna's five points from that magic M word after the first two minutes of this game went scoreless. Yeah, they, they've been consistently putting them up just about every 45 seconds to a minute. So they're definitely uh, definitely putting in some work. And and I, I truly feel like those Cicada, if they could get a goal on the board pretty quick, that they would have it How like that. There we go. There's the momentum. Hopefully they will continue to roll with that as Orb sinks that gorgeous three. Woo, and Cicada's on the board. Yeah, nice shot, nice stun to set it up with some good teamwork there as a Cicada. You know, late here in the round, they're kind of needing to get, uh, you know, whatever they can, whatever sort of momentum, and get some things figured out uh, to give them a leg to stand on as they move into round two here. So uh, excellent, excellent start. Uh, to that trend uh, that they hope to continue here. Some good pressure coming in. Uh, they are going to force... Oh, no. Good st good stun coming in as uh, the leech comes in there. And we do have a three on four for a little bit here. Uh, 
this late, it probably won't matter too much as the Turna can probably uh, burn off a lot of the rest of this time. But a good stack coming in, good speed, but not able to connect. Another chance here, Epic Evo with the disc moving in. Another shot, no! LA with the save! And a minute on the clock, and Cicada can't get that second score. And that's going to be right back down into the blue bubble as the stacks are flying in. However, well, it's not quite going to be picked up yet. There we go. Mo going to grab that one and send it right back down into the midfield area. Not quite getting it through. Going to get hung up on the Geos as Vortex grabs it, sending it quickly to Boombox. It's intercepted by Orb on that quick shot, though. And it is not just over just yet as Orb is moving right down towards the tunnel, looking for the best options. Going to send it deep all the way down through the trench as the, they are flying through. Mo picks it up, but loses possession to Boombox, who, uh, by the way, Eterna is down a player right now. Uh, yeah, they yeah. are, but it doesn't seem to be mattering here. I mean, they are holding their own right now, 3v4, but, I, I, you know, Cicada hopefully can take advantage of this chaos, maybe get another point or two on the board, because even if it's not enough for this round, momentum is key, and after that hot three-pointer, some more points would be huge, but Vortex is looking to let anything but that happen as he sinks in the last two points of this round. Eterna is going to take it 17-3, to and uh, after we do post-game, I have a fun little bit of rules trivia. Or not post game and that round analysis. That's the words. I know how to speak English. We're good. Yeah. Well, let, let's talk about what happened that round because uh, really, uh, Eterna happened that round, and it was it was a fairly dominant showing across the board. Even scoring there, uh, they were even even net positive. Uh, during the time they were playing down a player. And really, we talked about it before and we'll continue to talk about it. It is because of that transition game. Uh, Cicada has had the shots uh, on occasion, uh, but really they've been having a trouble getting set up in the zone very often. Because we can see when they get in, they've had chances and they, they've been very close on them, right? Where they had the three and they've had a couple ding off the post and a couple uh, that were some pretty, pretty stellar stops on the defensive side for Eterna. Uh, but yeah, uh, they've got to polish up that mid game. Uh, and they've got to work on getting those stacks together and, together and getting back sooner uh, because the odd man rushes that turn is having, uh, even if they hit just 50% of those, uh, they're going to keep walking away with it as they have so far. Yep. Yeah, One. we... Go ahead, go ahead, Sike. Don't follow you. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, we saw a really slow start to that first round and they were, they were battling it out pretty hard. They were fairly well matched for that first two minutes and 15 seconds or so, and then Eterna just kind of ran with the snowball and kept it going. Cicada did come in with that beautiful three-point shot there uh, at the one minute 38 second mark, but it was responded to fairly quickly by Vortex again over on Eterna. So hopefully round two, we will see Cicada mix it up a bit and come back ready to fight. Yeah, 100%. I mean, right now this game is being... Ooh. My bad well, so if I just broke anybody's ears. If you heard that, I'm so sorry. My microwave went off. That's crazy. Anyway, um, but like I was saying, this this game right now is being decided in the midfield. It's being decided, um, you know, Cicada has got to find a way to get it through the cracks of the defense of Eterna. They have got to find opportunities. And, you know, with the opportunities that they have found, they've got to capitalize on those shots, man. I mean, they've had luck getting it into the bubble, but they've been denied by the ding ring so many times. And if they can clean that up just a little bit, I agree. I think we will see a very different uh, round, too. But now, my little piece of rules trivia, because we are in a timeout right now, and these teams are taking a minute to, you know, calm it down. At the end of that first round, we saw Katara drop out of the arena, which left two rostered members and a league sub. A fun little piece of trivia, you must have three rostered members to start a round, so if they had not gotten Katara back into the arena, they definitely would have had to have taken this time out before they were allowed to start the second round. Absolutely, and that does not, uh, that doesn't include your, your sub, right? Because that is a league sub, not necessarily a team sub, Correct. so that person does not count. Yes, they are a league sub, which means they are not a rostered member. They do not count toward those three, uh, but it looks like Eterna is going to be all okay because Katara is back in the arena now. Yeah, back in the arena, but still taking the timeout. I believe the timeout was called. Do we know what side the timeout was called on? Uh, I believe that would have been... Uh, it was called by Blue, which means uh, it is coming in from Cicada. Uh, obviously trying to take as much time as possible to you know, figure out what they're going to do, what they're going to change up, because they do have to change things up coming into this round, because uh, whatever they had currently, uh, it, it wasn't working. And at this point, uh, I expect we're, we're going to see one things go one of two ways. Either uh, Cicada is going to come out here and they're going to compete and it's going to feel a lot better uh, for them, or they're going to take some risks 
and it's gonna blow up in their face. They have to take the risks, and it's kind of the, the nature of, of this game, uh, especially when playing from behind. Uh, so it would be very interesting to see kind of which way uh, the scale tips there uh, as, you know, we, we set ourselves up for that second round. And uh, real quick shout out to Vitality, who is subbing down there. We greatly, greatly appreciate you for doing that. Thank you so very much. You know, it's not that Cicada is not taking the shots because they are. And the more shots you take, eventually they are going to go in. So they are being persistent on that, which is really nice to see that they're not just you know, given up, which is fantastic. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping after that, that long three shot we saw from them in round one, that they, that they keep that going and that they're able to get a couple more points on the board. I really think that, that, that confidence comes from, from getting those shots up there will help them continue to roll forward with that. And, and we may see a very, very different second match, second round. I agree. And you know what, just to, just to put some numbers, you know, to, to these claims here, you take a look at the shots taken right now. There's 11 right now for Eterno, which is a good number, but then you compare it to Cicadas, they're at nine. I mean, that is two shots less than what Eterna has taken. And we see that score differential. It speaks for itself. And the, the saves are almost even as well. In fact, Cicada has one more skill um, than Eterna. So as long as Cicada can come into this round strongly and, you know, really slow it down a little bit in the bubble, make sure that those shots count they absolutely are capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with eterna yeah yeah and i we're very we're all very interested to see which way it goes we got a little bit longer yet as they're going to use their full time out here today um so figure might as well take this out here we've got a three game set coming up for you today so after this one after the eterna cicada match uh we do have a couple more uh good ones here coming up for you uh we do have uh arena rats versus Blue X, and then following that up, we'll be closing off the evening with Vicious and Vital. This is going to be an excellent set, so make sure you're sticking around for all three. Uh, and on that note, we're all set. Teams are in the tunnels. The countdown is on. Uh, Jeep, why don't you take us off into round two? All right. Well, here they come, ready for some play, and that's going to be a quick Jow sending that disc right down into the orange end as Epic Evo does get a pop off, sending that one down to Mo. Mo moving right towards the bubble, trying to occupy Boombox, gonna send it across, not quite gonna go where expected, and that's gonna result in a turnover there as Vortex picks that disc up, sending it right back down through the tunnel for the clear. Yep, all the way down into the zone here, but it looks like Mo is going to be there first for Cicada. They're going to get the pickup and the send on through the tunnel, but that is where Katara is hiding, getting a pickup and sending it back where it came from. But Chicken, oh my goodness, what a read there, gets the interception and sends it to Orb. Orb now down into the bubble, but LA will be there first for Eterna. And I'm going to do the equivalent of playing that Uno reverse card. Uh, offbeat, how about you enjoy that hydrate from Shao Fox and we send it back to Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> I do believe she just skipped you. Uh, as that we is long-awaited <laughs> revenge. <laughs> Mo going to send that disc across to Orb. And Orb is just going to keep backing up just a bit, trying to get away from Boombox, but it's not going to work. And Boombox is going to make that grab, sending it all the way into the bubble and off the wall. Going to be picked up by Orb again. And, uh, well, sent back forward. Trying to get that one through the tunnel. Not quite going to happen, though. And it's going to be a battle here as Chicken and Boombox are going at it. And Vortex going to swoop in and grab it, sending it right down to Katara. Katara sending that one across to LA, who is moving right into the bubble. Oh, what a save by Orb. And that just goes back out of the bubble. Yeah, it took us two over two minutes in the first round to get our first score here. And it looks like they're trying to equal that mark. Minute and a half gone here already. Excellent, excellent save from Orb as I thought it would fall apart and I wouldn't be able to open with that line. But as it stands, I'm moving up here. Not, oh, the mid game. The mid game is struggling hard for Cicada still. Uh, but fortunate, they had the two back there. They're able to collect it, reset, and get a good pass. Long pass down the tunnel for Mo. Mo looking for that three. It has the range. No, nearly. But is there's the rebound. The rebound, second chance. No, Boombox with the save. Great chance as we hit that two minute mark. I mean, once again, getting into the second round without a score yet, and oh my goodness, this is a 3v4 now uh, for Cicada. They're looking to score, but LA is not looking to let that happen as he gets a great defensive read and clear. That's all the way down into the zone of Cicada. 3v4, no problem as Boombox picks it up and puts it in for the first two points of the second round. Yeah, they lost Vortex here for the second round. We'll see if they are able to get back pretty quick, but so far they uh, they took a little longer here in round two to get points on the board. That was 15 seconds later than it was in round one, so this would be interesting to see if they're able to hold them off. Cicada definitely putting in the work as they come out grabbing that disc. It's chicken, sending it right down, but not quite going to connect. It is going to be picked up by Orb, though. 
orb is just going to move it back a little bit as the stack has prepped and they are ready. Now this is interesting because three ver three v four are always uh, a little different as they have to change up their play style. Yeah, yeah, they do. And they've shown to be pretty competent at that during the time they were playing like that last round. Uh, but last round, they had the nice little benefit of being up by about 10 uh, coming in here and being able to do that. Well, it's not going to stop them here. Katara uh, going to tuck that one in for two points thanks to an excellent team effort coming in there to get that pass. And uh, yeah, 4-0 lead here is Vortex. There he is. Vortex back in the arena. We're back even. Man, that, that cannot feel good right now for the side of Cicada. Had that 3v4 opportunity, but regardless, Eterna still found a way to get more points on the board. So now it looks like Cicada's trying to work their way forward with the dribble, but no, denied by Boombox up to LA, but LA narrowly missing that shot off of the ding ring. Now headed the other way though, as Mo helps it along, finding Epic Evo in the tunnel. Epic just taking their time here as they work up the arena. Incoming players now crossing over to Orb and Orb. Oh my goodness, what a bold shot on the goalie. But at 19 meters a second, eight meters out in that low portion, that's exactly where it needed to be to get them on the board. Oh. Yeah, and that's going to be Jasavinge going over to Eterna now, which uh, is the first time that we have seen this in round two. So definitely a, a little bit of a different game from round one to two very different teams right now la gonna quickly send that one down trying to get the relay not quite gonna happen it's gonna be picked up by orb instead orb is just gonna send it right back through again for the clear trying to get it out of there but it's gonna be picked up by mo mo looking for the best option gonna send it right through the midfield as epic ego does overshoot it slightly but gonna have to go back and pick it up it's mo again mo working as a one-man show right now Ooh. gonna lose possession of that disc though and it is anyone's Anyone's in the hand of chicken, but it goes back and forth here. Finally gets slapped up by LA, and LA gets it past mid, but hits the geode. Uh, fortunately, uh, Boombox is there with some space, with some time, so Eterna can set this one up on their own. Watch out for that stack, though. In it comes, and apply some pressure, uh, but getting that off for the reset. Excellent play there as they try and move it back and forth here. The disc still loose in a dangerous position. Orb with it, but watch out, because Orb, there is a tail. Bouncing around, Orb risks a little too much and loses the disc. The goalie had vacated, but the shot dings off the post. Boom box very nearly punishing uh the audacity on the ceiling there the yeah, audacity that is certainly one word for it but it looks like regardless they are going to score on this drive eterna gets that two pointer on the board to now take them up six to three man i cannot get over that play on the ceiling there though they almost caught the goalie in transition narrowly missing it but it does not matter they were very quick to get together and make sure to keep that volley alive and ending it with those points so now here comes cicada down by three plenty of time left on the clock coming out for this joust advantage it's going to be mo handling this one in the tunnel drawing out that pressure from LA before firing high to Epic. Epic on his way into the bubble with possible numbers advantages fires the shot but it's a bit too low bouncing all the way out of the zone but still manages to connect with Mo. What a what a save there on the possession over to Epic Evo. Epic oh my goodness denied by Katara even with somebody harassing the goalie they still get the save however Cicada not done another shot that's going to go a bit wide this time all the way out of the bubble but it looks like they're going to be there first again. Orb sends this one low to Epic Evo. Now finding the teammate on the way in, and that is exactly what the doctor ordered for Cicada. They're going to sink in the two and get themselves to back within just one point. And that's uh, nicely done indeed by Cicada. Orb has, has put all the points up on the on the Cicada side this evening, which is, is fantastic. It's working. Uh, everybody is getting points up on the board for something one way or the other as Joust goes to Eterna. Katara going to send that just quickly down all the way into the bubble. That's going to be picked up by Orb again and sent right back out again all the way through the midfield. However, Katara was there to send it back again right into the bubble picked up again by chicken who loses possession to vortex vortex sends it over to la la moving in and it is good and they take the lead by three yeah it doesn't get much easier for la they're able to scoop it up in space move it up towards the goal and pocket it into the back of the goal for two more points and extend that lead up two uh three now as it's been a much much closer game here in round two uh remember cicada still working down a game right now uh on the cusp of elimination uh losing this game in the best of three if they're not able to pull this comeback here long shot is going to go up and around and not enough teammates there as attorney is going to pick that one up reset back no mo with the steal mo with some space is going to choose to reset this one back with velocity Maybe a bit too much. Second time's the charm, though, as a Cicada with it able to set up here as long as they can corral that disc. 
Intercepted. Yeah, a bit off on those secondary passes there. I mean, they found that quick relief pass, which was great, but still not able to save the possession as this one's now cleared it down into the Cicada zone, recovered by Boombox just outside the bubble, drawing out this pressure as they wait for the teammates to get up with them, and it will pay off as they cross over to LA. LA on the way in, gets the duck on one, but will be denied by Chicken. What a save there. Chicken up to orbit, relays it along on through the mid. This could be an opportunity for either team, but it looks like Eterna is going to be the only one with a stack together to get the recollection. Vortex now with the pickup in the popcorn area under some pressure just flings it on through but it's going to end up in the hands of Orb instead. Orb sends this one through and crossing now off of that bounce from the Geo but it looks like yes Eterna there first with a little time to spare thanks to that stun. And that disc is going to go all the way down into the bubble. <laughs> nice leeching work from Mo, able to stun them out and not let them gain possession of the disc. However, it's going to be LA who sends it back to Katara. Katara quickly down to Boombox. Boombox right inside that bubble, having to try and get away from Orb. But Orb is going to steal that disc, sending it right back through the midfield, all the way down into the bubble area as the stacks do fly in be boombox picking it up right there on the floor and sending it over to la la gonna make that clear oh however it's gonna be stunned and stolen by orb oh, a little bounce off the geo though is gonna cost him possession yeah they, they've got it around here 47 seconds on the clock so keep an eye on that they really kind of do need a three here as they're gonna send that one in katara with the save gets rid of it before the stuns comes in mo trying to track it down but that disc is moving faster than mo is uh able to get a piece of it and slap it back as three different eterna players all up there providing pressure and it does stay here in the eterna zone only time for one more score here cicada needs a three to hold on to this enforced round three they've got a turnover orb with it with some space they're gonna be looking for that goalie stun but no one in position at the moment orb with some moves getting around a couple defenders takes the shot the goalie stunned but not able to connect 14 seconds on the clock now chicken with it trying to move it back into danger position orb with it moving up the goalie looking for that stun is the goalie stunned orb takes the shot it's a two the hand drifts inside the bubble and it's not enough eterna takes it in two Oh my goodness, I mean some 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 interesting movement going on out in the arena, but regardless, they're still not able to find that three-pointer. That is so unfortunate. Um, and though it was a valiant effort looking for that final set of points there, it is going to be Eterna taking this match in two rounds. Uh, Jeep, you got any final words for us before we pop on over to the second game? Because it's about to start. It is about to start, and no, just, you know, just those of you who are watching, hanging out with us, we really appreciate you being here. Just keep playing the game, okay? Let's have a good time and, and keep playing Echo, Echo, Echo. So let's go. Yeah, another match coming up right now in just a second.
<laughs> oh, we're, we're live? live. Oh, like, like us? Like, we're live, like, right now? They can hear us? That's crazy how that works. Hey, guys, welcome back to Echo Arena VRML1, where we only have professional casts on this channel. But we are excited to get into the next match. My name is still Psychaotic, as far as I know, and this is still Jeep Girls and Offbeat in the booth with me with Wonder T on the cams. Next up, we are going to have the Arena Rats as they take on Blue X Offbeat. Tell us about this match. Where on the ladder are we? All right, we're a little higher than we were last game. Slowly, slowly scaling our way up. Uh, rank 66 versus rank 99, both at plat one right now. And uh, both teams uh, trending in, uh, well, I wouldn't say opposite directions. One team, uh, we've got, you know, kind of the newer one coming in. Uh, that is going to be Arena Rats, uh, just with a four and one record on the season. So trending upwards. Uh, but on the other side, we do have Blue uh, with a 9-9 nine and nine on the season. So getting in a lot of work this season, uh, but kind of still hanging around there, struggling to kind of break forward today. So will today uh, be their breakout game, or uh, will this one be another run uh, for the Arena Rats to continue? I'm not sure, but I can tell you, uh, I, we played the Arena Rats this, uh, last week, I think, and their stacks are crazy fast, and their passes are great, so this is going to be a fantastic match between them. I have a hand grenade, Brick Rage, Amanda, and I have a flashbang coming in over on the Arena Rats side, and for Blue X tonight, we have Aiden, CJ, Suki, and Chris, so this is going to be quite the pair-off, and I'm excited to see this match. Yeah, as am I, and it's... I'm always a fan of the matching names, I'm gonna be honest. I mean, Blue X represented by all of these X names, and then I'm sure I have a hand grenade and I have a flashbang or coordinated. Otherwise, that would have been the craziest coincidence in Echo VR ML history. Um, but, you know, as you said, this is sure to be a really good match. And, and interesting that these teams may be trending in opposite directions. As we all know, you know, anybody who's played on the ladder knows that the ladder is constantly in motion. You make your way up or, you know, you may have a bad game and make your way down. So seeing, you know, the defenders take on the newcomers on their way up is sure to be an interesting matchup here uh, you know does one team have what it takes to stay up here or is one team going to continue to fall we don't know yeah uh arena rats they played their first game this week and uh if if that one is anything to go by uh they're definitely looking to continue that upward mobility uh pulling out a pretty pretty devastating overall uh, 36 to two, uh, two round win with a 14-0 and a 22-2. So lots of momentum coming in there from Monday, but it's Thursday and a lot can happen those three days and a lot can happen at the whim of blue. And we are underway here in the tunnels, out the tunnels. It's Arena Rats with the disc first. It yes. is, and I'm, I have to pause for a second because I was giving Offbeat that look because that 36 or 32-2 game was against my team, and I told you it was, <laughs> it was aggressive, and I'm salty, so yes. <laughs> Thank you. You're salty? I thought you were Jeep Girls. Hold on. <laughs> Listen, I thought you didn't like all the names. This is too confusing. I can't keep up with it. But you know who can keep up with it? The Arena Rats. That stacks so fast to track down that loose pass as that's I have a flashbang saying that up to Brick Rage on the backboard and they're going to put it in for the first two points of this game. They are indeed in just <laughs> just 45 seconds in, not even 45 seconds in, as uh, Arena Rat's going to take a lead here. Plenty of time left on the clock, of course, and Blue X gets the Joust advantage right now. They're going to come out and grab that disc. It's going to be Chris with it. We know Chris from seasons past. Going to send that one quickly through into the midfield. It's not quite going to get out, and Grenade picks it up, sending it right back down into the blue bubble. However, it's going to be Suki who picks it up and sends it right back down. Intercepted by Brick Rage and sent across the arena. Not connecting just yet as Grenade does get a hand on it. Trying to avoid Chris. Sends that one up to Amanda. Amanda moving right in. Looking for the cut. Mm -hmm. Not quite going to make it, though. Yeah, the cut definitely was a good look. Shame it didn't work out because uh, it was there, but the pass did need to be pretty precise. Defense was there, uh, closing in very, very quickly. Uh, Blue, they, they've been able to get the disc a few times here, but haven't been able to get out of the zone. Finally able to slap it over that midfield line as it does get out and uh, scrambling back and forth. Stuns both ways. Uh, Zuki, the latest victim of uh, that manslaughter as flashbang. No, not able to get the clear. Zuki back in the hand. Back in the hand of Amanda. Settle down, folks. Um... We, we need a call game. We can't if you keep stealing it back and forth. I will not settle down. Not while Amanda has the disc like this on the backboard, twirling and whirling to find the two points on the board. What a move there for Arena Rats to go up by four. Uh, definitely a, a different pace compared to our previous game here. Two scores on the board here early on uh, within the first two, two minutes. 
But you know as well as I do, that means nothing. All the time left in the world here for Blue X to find their answer. So let's see if they can do it here with this Jalice Advantage, which is going to start with Chris sending it through that cross-side tunnel, but that bounces right into the hands of Grenade, uh, Hand Grenade, if you will, who will send this one up to Amanda. Amanda now looking high at Flashbang on the shield, who uh, tries to put some pizzazz on it and pays for it, because that is not going in. And that disc is going to be right back down into the midfield area, but it's going to be sent back again all the way in and off the back wall. Aiden is there, though, to make that grab, sending it through the tunnel for a beautiful clear as uh, the stack comes in, sending it in off the backboard with a long headbutt is CJ. A long headbutt of all things. Um, great to see you too, Simplistic. Uh, hope, hope you're doing well. Uh, yeah, uh, blue, no scores until suddenly they get the long across the arena three. And suddenly what was a two score game uh, is now just a one point difference. Arena rats, a uh, lot, a lot of what a team is made of uh, is shown by how they respond to adversity. And there's nothing more adverse uh, than something like that going in that can really, really tick you off. But they seem to be doing all right coming in here, slow moving in, but no real pressure. So, you know, can't knock it if it works. Uh, Manda going to set this one back. Flashbang moving in. Flashbang, there's an open target. That's Brick Rage. Brick Rage with some points. Another two answering back and bringing that lead back to three. Very nicely done. Arena Rats definitely really very well polished at getting that just down the arena and just finishing it off in the goal. Jazz advantage going back over to Blue X right now as they are just down one goal for uh, six minutes. Plenty of time left on the clock as they come out grabbing that disc. It's going to be Chris. Chris does get it out before getting stunned out and that disc is all the way back down into the hands of Suki. Suki going to lose possession though as getting stunned out and Amanda picking up that disc. CJ trying to get in there to grab some of that action, but not quite going to happen. And it's right back down into the midfield area as Flashbang picks it up. However, getting stunned out and losing possession up to CJ. CJ off the back wall. Not quite going to go in just yet. They're going to have to keep trying. They, they are. are. They're still fighting here. CJ with another pick up off the back. <laughs> which so close. Oh my goodness, the placement on that, but Brick Rage says, get out of my house. However, Blue X still not done. Chris up to Aiden. Aiden looking for the goal, but finds the ding ring instead. But with a little help from CJ, they will still find the points. That goes in for the two, and now Blue X is back within one. Third time's the charm. A couple of chances there. A ding, a save, and everything under the sun. Uh, but for all of that arena rats just couldn't get it out of the zone and uh, the persistency of blue x is going to result in some points for them as they bring this back to one as we are halfway one half two quarters three six of the way uh through this first round here only the one point separating these two teams as it is amanda in the tunnel with some space just gonna slowly drift over that midfield line and take a look what do we got what do we got? Anyone? Anyone? Amanda's gonna send that one up. Yep, that's an open target. Brick moves in. Oh! Aiden with a short range save. Excellent stop. Uh, holding on uh, to that one point difference. And that's back in the hands of Amanda now. Moving right in. Gonna send it high up into the hands of I have a hand grenade. He was gonna sink it in for eight, another two. Stretching that lead to a three point, uh, three point lead right now with, with still plenty of time left on the clock though. Yeah, still so much time left on the go, four entire minutes, and, you know, technically still a one, uh, one goal game, uh, but there's plenty of time if they want to go the 2 twos route. Let's see if they can do it. Chris, as the QB once again, works this one up a bit more forward than previously before sending it low through. CJ looking at an almost open goal, and uh, that is... It, I, it happened. We're tied at eight. <laughs> Uh, you can see just a split second of indecisiveness of do I jump down to try and intercept it down below or do I grab it off the bounce off the backboard and that split second proved very very costly as the second very long range three goes in here for Blue X and they've got themselves equal on that scoreboard as uh, Brick Rage with time gonna take time before sending it up to Flashbang. Flashbang gonna send it across to Amanda, who's gonna pass it right back again to Brick Rage. They are just gonna work this disc right down the arena, sending that one back to Amanda again for a nice relay up. Oh, but a loss of possession with still anybody's disc as Hand Grenade Ooh. picks it up, sinking it in for the bounce. And they take the lead once again with three minutes left on the clock. 
the reaction <laughs> here, the movement, everything needed to make that angle work is nothing short of incredible. And they certainly earned that two pointer there. And with the clock winding down, I have the feeling we are going to get to the point where every point matters. So that is great for the arena rats. But now, oh, it's a timeout, actually. Just kidding. I did not hear the, 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 the thing, but we are in a timeout with arena rats up by two. Offbeat, do you know who took it? Yeah, we do. It was blue. Uh, so interesting. We usually see timeouts come in when, you know, one team or another really starts kind of, you know, stepping ahead and uh, things start to feel out of control, but not so much here. Uh, Arena Rats you know, regaining the lead here up two points, but Blue X decides uh, something something needs to change. We, we got to talk, folks. Yeah, it's always interesting to me to see what they do change. Uh, how, I, like when my team, for example, when we take a pause like this, there's there's a lot of motivational speech and there's a lot of, uh, hey guys, we got this kind of a thing. So I'm always curious to see if that's what if that's what they're saying or they're saying, hey, this is what we need to change. This is what we need to fix. And Psychaotic, like what would you do right now if you were Blue X? Find those clear lanes. I mean, once they get down into the bubble, once they get down into the zone, they've been having some good luck here. But a couple of times that we have seen some panic clears or some miscommunications on, on where those clears are going or where the relief passes are. And Arena Rats so far have been incredible at taking advantage of the chaos created in those moments. They have the stack together quickly. They're quick to recollect. They're quick to create time and space for themselves and quickly shift it into a, a calmer possession for them. So if Blue X can just clean up those little things on the transitions on getting the disc through the men um i would imagine that this two, two this two game is going to get even closer yeah do yeah. you do you guys feel like like offbeat for example when when you're pausing like this who has the advantage i mean obviously we've got blue x is in there talking right now and they're working things out and we see arena rats hanging out in the in the arena kind of goofing off having a good time enjoying themselves uh do we who do you feel like has the, the major advantage? The, the one in the lead right now or the one who's taking the pause? Well, it's really interesting because usually, usually we see the the pause used as a momentum stopper, right? It's, it's a play designed to kind of take whoever is doing the best and uh, slow them down, force them to kind of stop that momentum and uh, give your chances, yourself a chance to get back in that game. But very interestingly here, uh, I think we are seeing a roster swap as uh, we we're seeing uh, some we're, we're seeing some players bouncing in and out, uh, and I think we did see a new uh, player from Blue X come in. So I'm uh, very interesting to see if they kind of went, hey, um, we're seeing this out of the arena rats, and now we want to tailor our experience or we want to tailor our squad to specifically target that. And we're underway uh, out of the arena. That's what you get when you that's what you get when you stall right at the timeout line. Wonder if that was strategic. <laughs> I don't know, but we did see Jesse come in, and Jesse, I believe, was in the Twitch chat a few minutes ago. So uh, nice to see you in the arena, Jesse. They are going to lose possession. That's going to be flash. Nope, grenade. Going to send that one right back through, though, is Blue X getting it all the way down into the orange end as they are tracking it down there. Everybody overshoots it, though. Jesse going to pick it up and turn it around, trying to occupy Brick Rage. Going to send that back across to CJ for a reset. CJ just walking that one down the arena. Going to get it in the hands of Jesse again. Jesse going to send it quickly down, but it's going to be intercepted. They lose possession, but Grenade going to pick it up and make that clear. Yep, that is all the way through the tunnel down into the zone where it is quickly picked up by CJ. However, CJ cannot get away from the hand grenade. Grenade now sending this one cross to Amanda on the way in. Amanda rips the shot, but not going to go in. As CJ gets another pickup for Blue X and sends it back where it came from, bouncing off of the nest, off of the boot, down into the bubble. Oh no, one defender misses. CJ gets the pickup, gets the shot, but not quite the goal. I don't know what happened there, but it will not go in as I have a hand grenade now handles it in the mid and sends it all the way through yeah cleared all the way down into the blue x zone but uh arena rats not able to follow or <laughs> there they are the second attempt uh second wave coming in rather and surprising blue x and now forcing another loose disc here as cj uh forced to chase this one down and oh and amanda with the steal and back and forth amanda causing some trouble here as blue x looks like they want to slow this one up and, and try and move it forward uh but they just haven't been given the opportunity amanda and brick really just getting in there and causing issues as uh keep an eye on that clock as a very risky pass because brick has been causing a lot of damage and continues to do so but miscommunication on the arena rat side, and somehow, that's how Blue X gets this out. And they're gonna move the other way. They're gonna get, oh, 
golden opportunity, but it won't connect. Less than a minute on the clock now. And they really need a goal. Blue X needs to come in right now with a goal if they want to. They want to stand a chance here. However, a shot like that from Brick Rage is is really going to help the Arena Rats right now as they take a four point lead. Yeah, that is that is unfortunate. And I actually question if there's even mathematical time left. No, there's not. Thanks to that handy dandy overlay. Why don't you look at that? Uh, but you know what? There is time for just a couple more points from Blue X because you know as well as I do, momentum is everything. So if they can get another point or two on the board here just to propel them into the second round, that would be huge. But I have a hand grenade is looking to not let that happen. Rips the shot, but Aiden X is going to get the interception. Now sending this one through the mid, taking some bounces along the way into that cross side tunnel where it will be collected by Amanda. Amanda up and through finds Hand Grenade. Hand Grenade sends that one down into the bubble, bouncing off of the backboard. Brick Rage, one last cross back to Hand Grenade, and this time he will not be denied. 18 meters per second from 5 meters out is going to get the two-pointer on the board that ends out round one, 14 to 8 in favor of the Arena Rats. Yeah. Uh, it, look, it was an incredibly, incredibly close game. Uh, Moonlight, we see you in the chat uh, coming and jumping in from the game to here. Uh, revealing what was going on and it was uh some ping issues as i always knew of course knew oh knew, knew <laughs> that and there's no need to go back and uh check the replay but yeah um obviously blue x uh taking a little time to get used you know jesse getting warm getting into the arena and we did we did see that kind of slip a little bit here but now that jesse's had some time is gonna get warmed up with the team uh and is going to be able to i i feel like uh, there's no reason we shouldn't see blue kind of up uh, to the speed they were going at before and give us another uh, solid second round here. Yeah, you know, it's interesting to me. I was just counting up the goals and Blue X only had three goals in that round. They had a, two beautiful three point shots and, and the two pointer, of course. But uh, Arena Rats came in with seven and they were all two point shots, which was interesting. So the, you can see where those three point shots are definitely advantageous and they can really make a difference pretty quickly they they were scoring pretty hardcore over on the arena rat side about every every minute every minute 20 or something like that and uh once we got past that four minute mark blue x just did not seem to to really solidify too many more goals so um hopefully round two we'll we'll see some a little bit more aggression out of blue x and a little bit uh more shooting you know, with that in mind, taking a look at the team sets is actually kind of interesting here because possession is almost equal. Two minutes and 54 seconds right now for Arena Rats versus two and a half minutes over there for Blue X. So uh, it, it makes sense. It makes sense, even though we saw Arena Rats pull away at the end there. This game was so back and forth and even uh, throughout the course of, of most of round one up until the last two minutes there. So we know that Blue X knows how to handle this team. We know that they know how to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the arena rats sometimes when you have those last second substitutions in the middle of the round at jesse coming in it kind of throws off your team for just a little bit and that is that is not a dig at jesse in any way it's just you know no matter what happens when you bring in another player sometimes you've got to readjust to that new play style being added into the mix so i'm sure as we get into the second round as they start to solidify again as you said jeep um they are going to come out strong and i could very easily see us going to a round three here yeah absolutely look Wonder, you didn't have to word sneak it. I was planning to, to to bring it up as soon as soon as I as soon as we got a chance. I had I was building up. Look, I was I was all set to go. Like, hey, uh, right now in the middle round and the timeout in the middle of the middle round of our middle game of our set would be the great time uh, to make sure you are all aware of uh, the big big event that is coming up in. Uh, June in Denver if you are at all an Echo Arena fan or a fan of VR sports in general and that is of course uh, VR MLCon coming up uh, June uh, June early June first weekend in June uh, third and fourth in Denver um, it is going to be a ton of fun there are going to be other VR ML games there with Blast on and Ultimax uh, absolutely if you have not come out uh, to an Echo Land before it is a it is a once in a lifetime experience, quite literally now. Um, the, the social atmosphere, uh, the community you get to meet, it is uh, something I would absolutely recommend trying in at least once. And unfortunately, we're in that position where uh, once may be the only chance you get. So do not let this one pass you by if you are at all interested. Uh, would love to see you there. I know a lot of us will be there and I would love, love to meet you all. All of everybody. you, everyone. Everybody. And I heard Offbeat signing things. No, I also heard that. <laughs> I am. Offbeat, can Hi. I get your autograph when we're there? 
<laughs> oh yes, of course, of course, Saika. I didn't I didn't autograph enough stuff for you last time. I did I didn't really, did I? Just everyone else. Ouch. No. <laughs> but, um, so what does an offbeat uh, signature go for on eBay these days? Well, Twelve dollars and thirty four cents. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> but including shipping or no, I have charge been shipping price, too, of course. Psych has been price fixing. She she bought up all the supply and and is now uh, fixing it. I think that's market manipulation, Psyche, and I don't think uh, that's allowed. You know what I is mean, allowed? You tell me where on the AP she it is, okay? Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, that's How a great question, points? by the way. How many channel points for an offbeat signature? We do, uh, you know what, maybe we should make a, a, ch a channel re a points reward for that. Uh, get ready to cast my match and uh, we'll just replace it with an offbeat signature. <laughs> I'll sign something and we, we can, VRML will send it to you. That's the offbeat guarantee, not a guarantee. Round two, 30 seconds in, no points yet. <laughs> that disc is gonna be all the way down in to the orange end as they are trying to get to it. Brick Rage is gonna get a, a pop off of it, but it's gonna be picked up by Chris. Chris just moving right in, gonna send it down. However, the Geos get in the way, resulting in flashbang. Oh no, just kidding. That is gonna be a CJ shot off the back wall for the two. And Blue X is on the board first in round two. Excellent fight there from Blue X. Back and forth it went in the Arena Rats bubble, but CJ managing to get the pickup off after the teammate headbutted it out of the hands of the defense. Uh, good work there. Well earned points to kick us off here in round two. But now here comes Arena Rats looking to take it back. Brick Rage as the QB is going to hold for a second before going up to I have a flashbang. He will cross over to Amanda, taking this one low in the trap area before finding that high pass up to hand grenade on the ceiling and then back to flashbang. Excellent movement in the bubble. Amanda, the last person there for that final pass, but it gets red. They get stunned. However, it will not stop them. Oh my goodness. Firing the shot that may have been just outside the bubble and through the hands of Jesse in for the two to tie us up. Yep. Not letting uh, failure deter them. They keep up the pressure, keep it relentless, and are rewarded with two points and equal a backup. We knew that we were, uh, we were in for another tight second round, and so far, uh, it's been living up to that as we're two minutes in, two's on the clock for both sides, and Jesse, uh, with the disc moving up, looking to connect with an open target above the above the nest, but it won't, no worries, because CJ is there, gets the stun, gets the steal, dings it off the post, such a close opportunity, but won't be able to connect. Now, Arena Rats get this one, and they'll get it cleared out. They will, and the stacks are super quick, though, over on the blue X side, as Chris and Jesse get down to retrieve that disc, sending it right back down into the uh, orange bubble area as Flashbang picks it up, sending it right back again. And they're gonna have to fight to get to that one. Nobody's stacking there just yet. Jesse just gonna maneuver right down the arena, grabbing that disc, sending it right back through the tunnel again, all the way into the upper trench and across the arena as the stacks come in. I have a hand grenade, gonna send that one back out, losing possession though. And that's gonna be Chris picking it up right outside of the bubble, sending it down to CJ. CJ moving in, gonna bounce it off the back wall again, taking the lead by two is Blue X. What a play there by Blue X. Fighting on that, you know, cross side wall there, even after the defense got the pickup and a great find in the bubble to find that pass off the backboard. Just overall great work from Blue X. And they have their first lead, I think, of the evening. But let's see if they can keep it as Brick Rage here for Arena Rats handles this joust advantage, sending it up to Amanda. But CJ going to steal this one away, sending this one down into the zone. But a couple bounces actually work out favorably to keep it away from the defense, allowing Jesse the time. Time to get there with the stack. Oh, However, oh, oh. the shot not quite going to work as Amanda gets the pickup instead and sends it up to I have a hand grenade, but the clear will not make it through. CJ all over them gets the stun, gets the steal, gets the pass up to Chris, who puts it in for the three pointer. Oh my goodness, Blue X finds themselves up by five. Yeah, some good persistence coming in there from Blue X, uh, capped off by Chris X's Chris excellent shot. As a 7-2 lead, uh, definitely biggest lead Blue X has had here so far today as uh, Arena Rats uh, down two scores, a position they're not used to being in. And uh, time to see how they will adapt to that because teams do play very differently, uh, you know, whether they're up or whether they're down. And the stun's all coming up around that midfield and uh, is going to force an off clear as another chance for Blue X as they're looking to score again. And they will with a long three. That is CJ, 10 to 2 now. Here's Blue X, they've arrived. They have arrived, and you know what? <laughs> Comparing this to round one, this is 
This is two totally different teams in the arena right now, which we see it all the time, but this is amazing. As Arena Cats, uh, Arena Cats, I've just changed their name. Arena Rats have come out grabbing that. This is going to be Brick Rage just hanging onto it, not getting any pressure just yet as the stack does begin to ascend into the, the zone there. Going to send that word right back to Brick Rage again. Brick Rage just going to keep walking that one forward, sends it down to the tunnel to Flashbang. Flashbang all the way down. Beautiful pass down to Grenade. Going to pop it right back to Flashbang. Flashbang going to send that one all the way across the arena, the hands of Amanda, who is going to move right into the bubble, getting stunned out, losing possession, but Grenade going to sink it in off of Jesse's head for the two. There we go. That is what the arena rats needed to get themselves back in this round. And you know what? I'll tell you what I think just happened here, right? Blue X honestly exploded coming into round two. They upped the speed. They upped the stacks. They upped the responsiveness. Everything that they needed to start winning that game in the midfield, like we talked about between games, I'm sorry, between rounds, they 100% did. And I don't think Arena Rats was quite ready for that one there. I mean, holding on to it for a bit too long, allowing the stack to seal it away. And as I say this, oh my goodness, Blue X on the move again. There is that speed, that passing, that possession, everything that they need right now. And it's going to get them another three points on the board to answer back. I don't want to say it's cherry picking because it's not. It feels very, very different. That being said, CJ is doing an excellent, excellent job of being ready for those turnovers and getting themselves into a position where they've got an open and clear lane to the goal. CJ with 15 points by far and away leading this entire server. 15 points. The next nearest is six for my have a hand grenade. Uh, right place, right time. Uh, you know, you can only call it lucky for so long. Uh, CJ just incredibly finding those spots each and every time. That disc is going to be right down to the hands of Amanda, who is going to sink that one in. Getting another two points on the board for Arena Rats. They are not done. They are certainly uh, going to to give it everything they've got here and go. They want to finish it out, obviously, in two rounds. Of course, Blue X is shooting for that third. So we will see what happens. Joust advantage moving back over to Blue X right now as they do have the Joust advantage. I think I just said that. Jesse, with that disc, they're going to hang on to it for just a moment. No pressure coming in as the stack is occupied and being broken up in the midfield area. Jesse, keep walking that one down and... Still moving that one, getting it over to Chris. Chris going to find a player across the arena. Not quite going to connect, though, as Aiden comes in trying to get it. It's going to be Brick Rage making that crab. Not quite a clear, but Amanda does pick it up and going to send it across. Yep, sends it across and connects with Hand Grenade in the tunnel. Hand Grenade sends this one low and through, looking to connect with Flashbang here. Oh my goodness, unfortunately, off of the head of the teammate, and it looks like they will not get another try as CJ bats that one away through the same side tunnel, bouncing down into the zone, recovered by CJ, so just a complicated self-pass and almost a goal there. Excellent placement on the backboard, but I have a Hand Grenade is not letting that one in, and now sent up to Flashbang under pressure. Cannot get it through Aiden, who sends it right back where it came from, off of that back wall into the hands of Jesse, who looks for that quick tap. However, it will not go in again. This time, it's CJ's turn, and we know he knows what to do with those. That's going to go off of the head of Brick Rage and in for the two-pointer that gets Blue X up by nine. Yep, nine-point lead here has uh, just really, really has been such a different uh, Blue X team uh, from what we saw in that first round. We we saw, you know, moments of them clicking and keeping it even, uh, but it really has started to come together now as, uh, you know, they're they're being rewarded uh, for those efforts, for keeping their play consistent and, and for finding the vulnerabilities, right? They've had some time here to kind of uh, figure out what this team is doing and to figure out how they can best exploit it. And it's been working. And with a minute 30 left on the clock, they're going to be able to run this one out and uh, bring us to uh, a third round here. Well, they'll be, have a chance to to play for it all, uh, all for all the glory. For all the glory. You know, it takes a lot of guts to get there too, right? All the guts, all the glory. <laughs> Jesse going to send that one right back through all the way down into the orange end as it bounces into the bubble and off the wall. They are definitely flying in. CJ going to pick it up, moving right down. Going to try for the bounce shot. Not quite going to connect though. And Rick Rage going to send it back out. Rage gets that disc down to I have a hand grenade, which is going to keep walking down the arena as the stacks start moving through. And that's going to be picked up by Brick Rage right now in the floor. And we have everybody there, but Amanda going to polish that one off, getting two more points up on the board for Arena Rats. 
Yeah, I mean, with that two-pointer, it basically seals the deal here. Arena Rats is going to be out of mathematical time for this round. But honestly, it was looking very unlikely already. So points are points, and that's just going to get them some momentum to take into round three with them. But we still may see another score here in round two as Jesse ducks below the incoming stack. Now working their way to the mid, but oh my goodness, off the head of the teammate. Manda takes full advantage, sending this one down into the zone where it will be recovered by Brick Rage and put in for the two. That is exactly what Arena Rats were looking for to get themselves going here in this round to prepare for the next one because with only a handful of seconds left i would be willing to bet this round is going to end 15 to 10. yeah i mean you look at it and you look at the scoreline now arena rats have gotten this up to a very respectable scoreline for what felt like so much like uh, <laughs> the sitting in the goal sorry it broke me for a second uh what felt uh like such a runaway win uh for blue x for so much of that game uh, suddenly looks a fair bit closer and definitely bodes a lot better, uh, you know, for, for Arena Rats coming in into this third and final round. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I, I was really impressed with, with Blue X there in that second round. They definitely turned it on CJ coming in with some crazy, crazy goals. And uh, for them to take that so solidly in round two, of course, CJ ending up the round with 15 points on the board still. And... Yeah, hand grenade six, Amanda six, Brick Rage coming in with four, and Chris with three in addition to that. So everybody's definitely putting in some effort. This third round, I have no prediction in any way, shape, or form. I have no idea what to expect other than some, some more solid echo. You know, mm, I would have agreed that there... I think we're going to get a very solid round three. That is the only thing that I'm confident enough to say on the record right now as we go into this round, because we saw Blue X run away with this one pretty early on in that second round, right? I mean, they went up, I think, 10 to 2 uh, before Arena Rats were able to find another answer. But it, it really seemed like after that point, right, Blue X got five more points. They ended at 15 and... Uh, 10 more, 8 more, I think, went to Arena Rats to get themselves up to 10, and that's because Arena Rats learned. They figured out that Blue X was playing with more speed, playing with more passes, and they had those stacks and positioning ready to go to answer in the latter half of that second round. And uh, it looks like they're ready to start this one out strong as well as they win the Joust advantage. Uh, I'm sorry, they win the, the neutral Joust as this one's picked up and sent back to I Have a Hand Grenade to set up the Arena Rats over to Brick Rage. Brick Rage with this one-on-one -on -one will get it done. That's two points on the board to start out the arena at strong in round three yeah gp want to take it here while i uh overcome a quick technical hiccup and get back in the game yeah of course all right well you know what's interesting about that is that was faster uh than any of the goals so far in in the game tonight in this match uh the first one coming in in round one at nine minutes and then nine minutes again for round two. So at 9.42, they already have points on the board. This is definitely going to be an aggressive round. Jesse, with that disc right now on the Joust advantage, does lose possession, but going to get it back over to Chris. Chris sends it back to Jesse. Jesse trying to get it through, but going to lose possession to Amanda on the ceiling. Amanda going to send it all the way in, looking for that shot, but it's not quite going to connect, and it's going to be out again. Amanda maybe going to get another shot at that as sends it over to Hand Grenade. Hand Grenade going to... Pass it back for a reset instead. Back to Flashbang. Flashbang back to Amanda again, who's getting a lot of pressure from CJ, but gets it off to Grenade. What a save by Jesse. Denied and sent right back out of the bubble. What an insane save there. Borderline point blank, but the Arena Rats are not done as Amanda handles that one on the ceiling, taking it down to the shoulder and putting it in for another set of points to get the Arena Rats up four to zero. And honestly, this is, I don't want to say expected, but after the shift in momentum that we saw at the end of round two, yeah, and you know what? Expected here for Arena Rats to be starting out so strongly. Yeah, and... One thing you got to feel right now is right now, <clears throat> with one more score, I'd say, is if I'm Blue X is when I'm taking the timeout. But you got to remember that they did take that one already to, you know, get a ping issue resolved and swap some teammates around. So nothing like that there, but a reset uh, falls on deaf hands, by which I mean there were no hands. Uh, very fortunate uh, for Arena Rats to be able to get that out of that one with the disc. But a very nice cross, cross Arena pass gets into hand grenade down to the hands of Brick. Brick with some space. There's an open goal and nearly connected next with it uh, as the defense comes storming back uh, to recover this one and move it back for blue. I don't think they realize that. Oh, go ahead. 
I was just gonna say, I don't think they realized that goal was open in time, right? Like, I, I don't, I didn't yeah. see who that was there on the side of Arena Rats. They were happy to work that one forward, and by the time they realized the goal was open, the stack was already on its way back and forced the early shot. Uh, but they're not done yet as they get the pickup in their own bubble and now look for the clear. It's gonna require a second try, but this time it is through as Flashbang sends that one all the way down into the zone. Oh my goodness, we're gonna call it calculated as Amanda masterfully handles that bounce and puts it in for the two. Arena Rats are up by six. They are definitely taking a solid lead here in this third round, which, you know, ironically, when when you when you tie that for I mean not tie, but you have each have a, a win on the board, this third round is is the one that matters the most. So they have to really work hard and they are definitely doing that. Amanda gonna send that one right back in off the back wall and into the hands of Grenade, who's gonna sink that one in for another two point shot. Taking an eight point lead for Arena Rat. Momentum is certainly wild, is it not, fellow casters? It's, uh, wow. It's it's out in full force here as that 8-0 lead uh, carrying that momentum from round two into this round and showing no signs of stopping as this game has just been back-to-back uh, -back uh, offsetting tidal waves uh, so far as coming back on defense, getting that steal. It's hand grenade with it, is going to get it cleared. Oh, gets a fortunate bounce to get it past the defensive, uh, you know, backstack and nearly sinks the long three. Fortunately, dings off, but not out of trouble yet because that's a steal. That's flashbang moving in. Has the cut? No, not able to connect with it. And this will bounce out towards midfield as uh, no one able to find it yet. Yeah, finally, I have a hand grenade getting a hand on it, sending it up to flashbang on the shield. Oh my goodness, off of the noggin of Jesse and in for the two. I mean, arena rats are on a roll right now. That is 10 unanswered points and offbeat. Like you said, this is where you would be taking that timeout. It is unfortunate though that Blue X had to use it earlier to resolve the ping issues, but they're not done yet. They're not done yet. If they can find a, you know, just, just one goal on the board here soon and get themselves back in it while there's still time to answer back. And that is, that's, that's it, that's it. That's exactly what they were oh. looking for. Chris to CJ and CJ who has been dependable time and time again, there on the floor with those long threes is gonna do it again and get them on the board. They certainly are. And we have a uh, hydrate there from Tank VR5 coming in in the Twitch chat. So you guys make sure that you take a sip and make sure we honor that request. That's going to be Brick Rage right now with the Joust. Looking for that stack to come in since that just quickly down into the hands of Amanda, who, oh, trying to get a hand on it. But uh, Jesse definitely getting giving them a run for their money. Gets that disc right back through the tunnel as it's going to be hand grenade. No, Flashbang. Just kidding. Flashbang picks that one up and trying to get away from Chris. Sends that one across the arena. It is wild. It is free. And that is going to be anybody's disc. Yeah, Jesse going to get this one cleared out. There's Chris. Chris looking to potentially turn and flip this one. And Jesse, because uh, looking for that bounce shot off the ceiling. Not going to connect, but still in a dangerous area as everyone floats back. No stacks really able to get back together. And it's a flashbang. Oh, no, the turnover. And the turnover looking for the bounce shot. Will not get it past the post. A uh, solid chance there as uh, suddenly uh, Blue X with a couple of good chances here and possibly shifting momentum back in their own direction. Now they are still fighting here. Arena Rats look for a clear like three times and CJ will not let them have it. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. CJ, I want whatever he had for breakfast because he is killing it right now. That is back to back three pointers for him. And that is going to get Blue X back within four points. That's just two twos. That's it. And there's so much time for them to find it. There is definitely, and I can tell you what he had for breakfast. He had Beast for breakfast because you are what you eat. That disc was right down in the hands of Flashbang, <laughs> sitting it all the way down. However, it's going to be picked up by Chris and returned back to the tunnel to Jesse, but losing possession again as they are stun heavy in this match tonight. They are going to have to fight to get the uh, disc. It's going to be Flashbang who comes out with it, sends it back to Brick Rage. Brick Rage across to Hand Grenade. Hand Grenade going to send it into a man, but it's going to be intercepted by Aiden and sent right back down into the midfield area as the stacks do pair up, getting through to that disc. Yeah, great read by Aiden there to take away. Because <clears throat> if that pass connects, that is absolutely an easy goal coming in. No way goalie has time to react to that. As everyone comes and drives through, uh, stunning Brick Rage in the head and moving in. Chance for a couple two points. There's the first two. You mentioned we only need two of them to lock up this game. Well, there is one, and it is a one-score game coming back from the brink. Down 10 nothing midway through the round in, uh, in just over two minutes. They have brought this back 
to a single score game. And now who's calling the timeout? It's Sewer Rats. Uh, I'm sorry, what did you just call them? What? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> oh, Offbeat no. accidentally oh, no. throwing shade in here on the cast. He said, you ain't nothing. Blue X oh, has God. got you. <laughs> Arena, rats. <laughs> that is too funny. They spell it differently in Canada. <laughs> Yes, that's, we, we have yeah, our the own S is silent, spellings. Like, come on. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, okay. But, but but taking a look at this match really quick for a second here. Blue X absolutely shot out of a cannon right now. This is a smart timeout for the Arena Rats to be taking right now. I mean, they went up 10-0. to zero, And Blue X with those back-to-back three-pointers, courtesy of CJ. Honestly, we've been talking about momentum all night. And if that's not the best example of it, I don't know what is. They just, they started playing better after that. They started playing with confidence and i mean speaking of confidence that last two pointer they just got that one player just drifting into the bubble backhanding it in like this is going in one way or another speaks for itself these players know that this is winnable and arena rats are now you know back on their heels here just narrowly holding on to their two-point lead that was a whole 10-point lead just two minutes ago yeah, they 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 did it again. I mean, this is the same thing. Actually, the same exact thing they did in round one. A three, a two. No, they. I'm sorry. A three, three, two is what they did this time. The first round was that uh, the three pointer, then the two pointer, and the three pointer. And those three pointers are where they're really coming in because they're able to, you know, just score a couple of goals, and that one point just makes so much of a difference. So if you can get back out of the bubble and can get that shot in. You're definitely uh, in a better position because they've only had three goals in this third round, whereas, you know, arena rats have had five. So and they're just they're just down by two points. So this this last two and a half minutes, three minutes here is going to be remarkable. Yeah, absolutely. I'm running, trying to run some quick math here. Yeah, CJ, uh, 21 points on the board so far. Uh, the rest of his team combined uh, three points. But that's not to say that CJ is carrying this game, just to say that CJ is lighting it up on the scoreboard because that is absolutely backed up by Jesse. Uh, Jesse, who came in partway through round one and leads the game by a wide margin with five saves definitely a big part of the comeback here is we're back in the arena time to see if that timeout did the arena rats any good yeah we shall see they're coming out strong with this joust advantage down low to amanda but amanda narrowly going to miss the goal there almost turning into a self-clear but it does find the hands of brick rage on the back line now back over to i have a hand grenade finding amanda in the bubble but once again denied by jesse that is his sixth save of the evening oh well, sixth registered save i honestly think he's got more than that as he now jumps out of the goal to get the pickup moving this one around to keep it away from the hands of amanda Look Looking for the clear, but it is not going to go through just yet. Requires another try, but this time Jesse will get this one sent to the mid. And that is going to be right there. Stolen away by I have a hand grenade and sent a little bit high. Not quite going to connect. Jesse trying to get to it. Not going to get to it either. It is going to be Aiden who gets a hand on that disc. Gets that one to Chris. Chris going to send it right through. However, Brick Rage is there to make the interception. And it's right down into the floor as Amanda picks it up. Sends it to ha I have a hand grenade. Who's going to sink that one in. They are stretching that lead. Chipping away. And, and you know, they're up by four. Yeah, clock is the uh, target right now. Keep an eye on that. Minute 23 left there as uh, a two-score lead now is critically, critically important. And uh, Blue X, they got to get some points and they got to get them fast. They have shown that they're very capable of that as wow, well. The long clear coming in. CJ gets it. CJ takes the shot and CJ hits the three. Uh, the stun coming in to help guide it in. But one way or another, that was an incredibly quick rollout and score. Wow. I mean, that that practically guarantees we will not be seeing an overtime here, right? I mean, Arena Rats, if they can get a three-pointer, that'll seal the deal. If they can get a two, I mean, oh my goodness, this is so close. Blue X will get one more try. Let's see how they can handle this one as I have a hand grenade crosses over to Amanda, but denied by Jesse. Even if he's not in the goal, he's still getting the saves. What a grab there, but not going to find the clear just yet as this bounces high up into the popcorn area. Oh, but Jesse jumping out of the goal all the way through the tunnel. Now this is down into the zone. This could be the opportunity oh my goodness almost bouncing in on its own but it is going to find the hands of amanda who looks to get this one sent through and it will go through for that cross clear bounce down through the tunnel 
down into the zone, down just in front of the goal where I have a hand grenade will seal the deal. That two pointer is going to put the arena rats up 14 to 11. No time to answer. They have taken it in three. They have it certainly time to wave that white bandana as this match is over. And that is in favor of the arena rest tonight coming in with those uh, the first and the third round. So we do have another match we have to get to immediately. So uh, you guys don't go far. We've got Vicious as they take on Vital. And that is going to be quite the match. So we'll be right back in just a second. This cast is my recital. It's Vicious versus Vital. To rock a rhyme, that's right, on time. It's Echo is the title. Here we go, Offbeat and Jeep Girls. This is our last match of the evening. Vicious versus Vital. This is the top of the top. We are in the master tier. Let's take it away. Offbeat, kick us off. Yep, uh, Vicious in blue, Vital in orange. Vicious with that number one spot in the league right now. Vital with the number three, looking to dethrone the king. And Vicious looking, <laughs> Vicious out of the gate. Quick score, 12 seconds off the clock, two points and one disc in the goal. Wow, they are not wasting any time as they, they're ready to play, evidently. They said, hey, you guys, well, uh, let's go. We've got some time to make up. I don't know if the, if it works that way, though. Joust Advantage going over to Vital right now. Nine minutes, 30 seconds left on the clock. They're going to come in and grab that. It's going to be Mozzie inverted on the ceiling, but the stack is moving in. He's going to send that just quickly over to KJ. Who's going to get that one to I? 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 Is that I? 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 Mozzie. A. Back to Mozzie. <laughs> it's A. A. Okay. Okay, A. I have no idea. I don't either. KJ, with that is now going to send high back into A's hands. He's going to lose possession to Matthew. Going to make that clear, sending that one all the way down through the tunnel. 
all through yeah. the tunnel, but Mozzie is so fast to track it down. Now sending it up to A, and I don't know how you say his name, but he knows how to shoot. That's in for the three-pointer, and Vital is going to go up by one point. Pretty sure you pronounce it, eh? As, uh, yeah, three-pointer. Excellent accuracy on that one. Good answer back as uh, Vital reclaims that lead. Looking like they're, you know, they're they're not far off here. Sure, Vicious might be the number one, but how number one are they, really? Uh, we'll figure that out tonight as here they come back the other way. A good quick rollout. Uh, disc is loose, but in space. And so they're able to kind of pick this one up and uh, move into it as coming in. Uh, the shot, the stun. Vicious answers back with some points of their own. They certainly do, uh, taking the lead by one point. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of this back and forth from these two teams tonight. Currently, a Vital is in fourth place and Vicious coming in in first. So, uh, very well-balanced match here as Vital comes out with the Joust advantage right now. Going to grab that disc. It's going to be Mozzie. Mozzie is just hanging on to it for a moment as the stack is right there. Going to get it down to the hands of KJ, who pops it right back to Mozzie, but a missed connection could cost them as Matthew is moving in for that disc. We get it down to Chrome. Chrome just going to send it right through into the midfield, up into A's hands. I, A, I, O. Oh. KJ with the disc now, going to send it all the way down to Mozzie. Mozzie working right into that bubble, going to send it to Chrome for a slam dunk. Nice little shot there, taking the lead again to Vital. Oh my goodness, Vital continuing to bring the heat here, now taking their lead back, though it is only one point, so that is not a safe buffer by any means with this much time left on the clock. And, uh, you know, uh, to note here, you know, Vicious we know was our runner-up in our finals of last season. Vital is a new team this season. They have been on their way up so far, undefeated, and now playing who is the top team in the league. It is interesting to see them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this team right now, but we'll see if they can keep up that pace as this gets sent all the way down into the zone bouncing off of the wall into the bubble of vicious where it will be picked up by zach w pre-stacks with sweet tooth as they look for the dribble clear it's gonna look good as it gets through the tunnel bouncing low into the hands of sweet tooth and we know he knows what to do with those that is return fire with that three pointer and looks like vicious is up by two so question for the two of you <clears throat> suppose a team starts the game uh or starts the cast as vital and then within you know, within the time uh, between the scheduled start time of the match and when we start casting it, their their name changes to Vital Mafia. Which name do we continue referring to them as? <laughs> Purely hypothetically. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that is not a hypothetical question. Um, well, you know, I guess if their name is now Vital Mafia, but the stream says Mafia Vital. You know what? Let's just call them Mafia. This could be wrong all the way around. Okay. Yeah, all right, sounds good. Well, it is <laughs> it is going to be uh, vital currently with the disc and currently struggling uh, to get it out of the zone here as Mozzie is going to get punched in the face, but not before uh, sending that disc through to A. And A with it is going to move through that tunnel, looking through some space. No, Zach W comes from behind, shuts the door, and gets the turnover. I, Offbeat, I feel like I need you to teach me how to say it like that. Like, I really don't know if I'm capable of making that sound. Is it A? Is that? Yeah. That's pretty okay. good. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. All right. I'll take it. Well, KJ Timpa, oh my goodness, trying to take it there on the back wall, looking for the lane in, but will not find it. He gets denied by the defense, and now Vicious is sending it the other way, bouncing off of the back wall and into the hands of Matthew, who has all the time in the world to put that one in for the two, extending this Vicious lead now up to four. Okay. Now, Saika, if we're going to say A, like offbeat, he has to say it like we would. <laughs> But you don't say it. Hey. Hey. Aye. Gotta draw, Aye. draw it out a little Aye. bit. Come on now. Aye. All right. That's going to be Mozzie with that disc on. Jowl's going to send it right down in the hands of Chrome. Chrome getting a little heat from Zach W. Going to get it across to KJ, who is definitely getting some pressure from Sweet Tooth. But that disc is back in the hands of A as it's sent across the arena. Not quite going to connect. And Sweet Tooth trying to get to it. But it's going to be Matthew who comes out with that disc in hand. Sending it right back through the midfield all the way down into the trench as it is moving down towards the bubble. Yeah, Sweet Tooth going to pick up that disc. And on down below, looking for Matthew. Matthew got it. Looking across. There's Palace on the other side. Palace down above. Looking bone. Does his goalie behind the No! Going to get cleared out off the back line as Vital. Putting up a solid defensive work to keep that score line at four. As that is going to get cleared out. Not out, though. Zach W with the disc moving up. Looking up ahead. There's Matthew up above. That has a teammate looking to stun the goalie. He is going to reset this back to Zach W. Zach W with some space up on the ceiling. Looking in. Pass Matthew. They're looking. Lots of chances. Looking for that perfect pass, though. As a Palace with it. It's just going to retreat all the way back 
back to Cloud and uh, try and set this up and kill some time as Vicious with that four point lead and only four minutes left on the clock. I'll be, are you casting a game or are you auctioning off the disc at a cattle auction? I'm very confused here, <laughs> but you know he's not confused. Matthew, oh my goodness, receiving that pass and immediately puts it away for that two pointer. Once again, extending the Vicious lead this time up to six. I was about to say, Mr. Offbeat, I do believe you should come over for some mint juleps on the porch. <laughs> that was not half Bravo. bad for Canadian. Bravo. All right, that's going to be Mozzie with that disc on. Jow's grabbing that one. Oh, but a denial and grab. Interception by Zach sends that one to Matthew. Matthew for the three, stretching that lead. Oh, man, they're in some trouble. Yes, they are. Very correct, G Jeep Bell. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Psycho. <laughs> No, that's okay. I keep forgetting the order. It's almost past my bedtime. Like, it's it's fine. Please just cut me off if I'm starting interrupting people. It's cool. Um, but All hey, right, sounds good. So it is going to be moved up here as uh, KJ Tempa going to send this one in as Chrome, with some space down there underneath his vital, uh, really started to kind of lose track of this one. Uh, started out fairly even, but so far Vicious has really been answering the bell here as uh, back to KJ. KJ with some space. Uh, going to move this one up. Look for a target. Has an open target down below the goal. And the shot coming but that one will ding. Still able to recover though. There's an open KJ Timpa on the shield up down below and Chrome will put that one in. Vital will take the points whenever they can and Saika pick up two. Okay, thank you. I needed that. Um, but yes, with those two points, Vital is going to get themselves back within seven, which, you know, is doable with these two and a half minutes we have remaining here, but against a team like Vicious, that is definitely a tough ask. And, uh, oh, maybe, maybe they're not done as Chrome gets a beautiful read there off of the Joust, sending it up to Mozzie. Mozzie over to KJ Tempo. Oh my goodness, just in time, sneaking that one in for the two. Vital is not done yet. This is just a five point game. I'm starting to feel like this is going to be like the last match where, you know, they automatically just turned on the aggression and they, they came back kind of from some place that was that was not so good. They are definitely definitely putting up a heavy fight right now as Zach gonna send that disc down. Ooh, the stacks are moving so incredibly quick that they are not keeping possession of it. KJ has that one now, sending it right back down to Chrome. Chrome's trying to stay away from that Sweet Tooth Matthew stack as they do gain possession of that disc right there. Sweet Tooth's gonna send it back into the orange end of the arena as the teams are gonna start flying through. It's gonna be KJ picking it up, sends it back to I. No, just kidding, Palace for the three. Ooh, what a shot. What a shot indeed. Eight point lead restored and that will just about do it for uh, this first round here as Vicious. Um, stamping uh, their, their, uh, their seal of royalty on this one and showing that they still deserve that crown as top spot. Uh, we'll be taking this one. The only question at this point is what will be the final and who will have the momentum going into that second round? Because uh, we've seen how much uh, in our previous games, how much it can change going in. That's a good little play back the other way. Mozzie receives the cut. Mozzie puts it in the goal and drops that lead uh, to six for potentially the last score of the game. We'll see if Vicious has anything to say about that. Yes, we shall see, indeed. I mean, we know that Vicious knows how to move quickly, especially off of these jousts, so very likely that we will see one more score one way or the other. But let's see, as Matthew, oh, I'm sorry, Palace with a pickup, pre-stack with Matthew, sends this one over to Zach W. Zach W. sends it on through, finding Sweet Tooth now down low, connecting with Matthew. Matthew on the backboard. Oh, I don't know if that was off the head or through the hands, but either way, good for the two, and Vicious is going to go up 19 to 11 to finish out this first round. Yes, they will. They are not even going to have time to get back out of the arena here. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. 11 to 19 for round one. Vicious taking that first one. This will be interesting to see how they mix things up in round two. And if Vital Mafia is able to come back and, and attack Vicious pretty hard. We'll see. We'll see. Good stuff. Yeah, uh, looking at the stats here, Matthew leading the way with 11 points ahead of uh, most of the rest of uh, the server by by a fair distance here. Um, but, you know, we've seen time and time again through these games that that really is just a role, right? Teams come in and they all have players that are set to do specific things. And Matthew, in this case, is the one who's there uh, to receive those passes and, you know, be in the position to score. And uh, Vicious is working that system very well. Uh, from Vital, we've seen moments of 
being able to play with him, of sticking even with Vicious, but we haven't really seen any moments of real vital domination here. No runs of points, if you will, and I feel like that's something they're going to need if they're going to want to take two rounds now off of Vicious. Yeah, I mean, 100%. It, the momentum shifts were interesting because it was, like you said, it was basically either Vicious on a run or Vital keeping them in check. Not even necessarily, you know, gaining any kind of lead there, just really honestly only going toe-to-toe -to -toe and keeping them in check, keeping it even. If they want to be able to answer to those Vicious momentum runs, they have got to find a way to create some of their own. And, you know, you, you look at this team, you look at this roster, and even though it may be a, a new team, these players are very talented, no strangers to situations like this where they know that they need to to clutch up so i'm sure the second round is going to be a good one that's gonna be palace losing position of that disc as kj trying to get a hand on it watching his back definitely gonna grab that disc inverted on the ceiling looking for the best pass gonna find it to mozzie mozzie to chrome for the goal and vital mafia is in the lead first here in round two that they are uh two points and uh, exactly what they needed exactly what they needed right as because we've seen at their best so far, they're keeping up with Vicious. And so getting that early lead is very, very important uh, for them being able to, you know, flex this, to, to keep, you know, uh, some, you know, style of play uh, that's their own, to let them dictate how the game plays out here. And uh, they do a decent job here as they've kind of forced a turnover, but that reset is not where they wanted it to be. And that's going to be costly as Vicious picks it up, goes the other way and gets a three. Zach! From an off angle, we'll put that one in. Uh, that's that's master level play right there. That is why Vicious is number one. It's off of the back of shots like that. And Vicious with the lead back. I mean, there were some solid ideas there from from Vital trying to find a way out of that play. We saw the, the attempted relief pass, that slap uh, was, was the right idea. They just weren't quite able to execute. It is going to get Vicious on the board, but now Vital moving quickly, looking for this answer here as Mozzie receives the reset and sends it over to KJ Tempo at that cross-side table. KJ now playing cautiously. This is the possession play that we know and love from this higher tier. Up now to Mozzie. Mozzie, oh, looking low either for the shot or the pass to Chrome, but it's not going to work either way as Matthew gets a great save there sends it up to Palace Palace helps it along I think looking for the cloud shot but bounces down into the hands of Sweet Tooth instead in the trap who still has time to take the shot oh my goodness you cannot give that man those lanes from 28 meters out he is going to sink into three that extends this vicious lead up to four yeah, they're, they're, they, they don't want to go to a third round <laughs> you know as much as we all love Echo you want to finish this out in two Joust advantage now going over to Vital Mafia. Eight minutes left on the clock, a little under. That's going to be Mozzie with that disc. Sends it quickly down to KJ. KJ trying to get away from that stack. Going to get the disc right down the hands of A. I. A. I'm going to be stuck on that forever. I think it's Mozzie. Y'all. <laughs> y'all. Yes, y'all. And that disc is right back down into the hands of Zach W. Moving in for an open goal. And it is good, barely, as that, that goalie did just come flying through that disc, uh, through the goal. Yeah, just a little too late. Gets a piece of it. Not enough. As uh, Vicious putting that lead back to six points here. And, uh, you know, kind of shown uh, just more of what we saw last round. Vital has moments of being able to stick around. But Vicious, they can chain a few of them together. And they have done so here. As uh, KJ Tempa looking to see if they can't reverse this here. Gets it down to A. As uh, A back to Mozzie. Mozzie looking for that cross pass. Will have KJT. They're moving it quickly here. Need to keep it away from the pressure. Gets a nice little bounce shot off the ceiling. Gets around the defense. But Sweet Tooth shuts that down with an excellent play in the goal. And gets this one cleared out of harm's way for the time being. But oh my goodness. Turned back the other way. A with the shot from up high. Woo! Vacated that goal a little too quickly as uh, Vital takes advantage. Hey man, sometimes you gotta give up on the two to hit the three. That is exactly what Vital really needed there as y'all hits that three pointer to get them back within three. Uh, and still so much time left to go, but we know that Vicious has been so dangerous on these jousts and here they come for another one. This one's bouncing high into the zone. Oh, picked up by Sweet Tooth, but immediately stunned out by Mozzie. And that allows KJ to get there first, getting the quick pass up to Chrome. Chrome feeds this one through the mid, but I think Vicious is gonna be the ones with the stack together first. Yes, they are. Sweet Tooth getting home to get the pickup, finding that relief pass over to Matthew. Now Matthew working it forward to Zach. Zach all the way through. Oh my goodness. What a powerful yeet down into the zone where it will go off of the backboard, but right into the hands of KJ for Vital. And that disc is going all the way. Chrome going to send it in. Trying to get it into the goal from there, but Zach is home. 
going to deny that, grabbing it and sending it right back through for a beautiful clear. However, KJ was waiting on it down there and is back to Chrome. Chrome going to pop it high and right into the hands of A. A across to Mozzie. Mozzie, hang on to it for a moment. Going to send it in. Sending off the ring, though, and not quite. It's not over just yet, and that is going to be a clear from Vicious. Yeah, nice uh, clear there from Zach. <clears throat> Getting back to collect that one is Matthew. And oh my, my, Matthew. Putting that one in from that same off angle we saw Zach do earlier. Hits it for three and brings that lead back to six. We're now midway through this second round. Uh, vital. Uh, they're, they're, uh, not, they're not in the spot they want to be in uh, to force around three. Yeah, I mean, they're not in the spot, but they're also not done yet. We've got about half of this round remaining, and they are working their way up the arena. They've had chances. That's the thing. They've had chances. They have this solid possession play. Uh, just They've just not quite executed once they get it up into the bubble, or they have not quite met the speed of the stacks that Vicious is running at them. But still, here they come, looking to make something work off this volley. That is KJ Tempa finding y'all on the backboard one more time. I'm sorry. I had to. But hey, two points are two points, and that is certainly going to be two points <laughs> you know I told you it's past there. like his bedtime I, I forgot what I was saying in the middle yeah, of that I think it's fantastic y'all it is as uh we so we saw vital mafia actually in the last three minutes two and a half minutes actually of round one score three goals so they are far far from out of it as that disc was right down in the hands of matthew's hands matthew gonna pop it up to sweet tooth moving right into the bubble and it's gonna go off the ring and not quite in and back out again mozzie is the first one to get there nobody really uh challenging that as it's sent right down to the hands of oh. the, uh, right back out again and we have a hydrate by the way legit dash coming in you are coming in clutch tonight taking care of us we appreciate you absolutely uh did take a good long swig of dihydrogen monoxide on that one it was much appreciated as vicious uh getting back here and really stymieing any vital attacks as you know uh they're able to move it forward on their own and oh that is an open goal don't give matthew an open goal uh 14 to 7 now vicious doubling up vital uh 3.30 left on the clock. Tick tock, my friends, as uh, Vitals uh, time is is ticking away. Yeah, it's, it's taken away, and they've, they've had the opportunities. They just need to find a way to execute. Down by seven with three minutes left is certainly not over, but, uh, you know, considering the performance that we have seen from Vicious this evening, it is definitely a tough ask, but they're going to try regardless as that reset back to KJ is good, and the pass up to Chrome, and then to Mozzie looks even better. Oh, my goodness. A on the ceiling, not liking what he sees. Hits that quick reset to KJ. Now through down low to Mozzie. Mozzie finding Chrome. Oh, my goodness. The coordination from Vital. The quick pass is there. No one held it for more than about a second, and it pays off as they find the two points to get on the board. That was beautiful play by Vital Mafia, indeed. You know, like you said, it was very quick, uh, a very rapid succession of uh, of movements there from that disc, and it just, it definitely worked for them. It was very well polished too. Fish is with the disc now. I'm gonna send that one through, and it's gonna be all the way down into the bubble. Oh, and an open goal as Palace sinks it in for the two. Uh, will indeed do that as <clears throat> for all of these hard high effort uh, vital pushes they they put in a ton of work make some great crisp passes move it all the way down persist score some points and then vicious like it ain't even a thang back the other way and just scoring points in rapid rapid responses and uh, they've got another turnover here as they're going to move it down into the bubble coming in Matthew's got it Matthew's got a goal with two players in it but two is not enough nine point lead as vicious uh, pretty much puts this one to bed that movement from Matthew, absolutely crazy. Ducks and jumps everything that he needed to get the defense out of the goal and open up the lane for the shot. So with one and a half minutes remaining, unless Vital starts putting in threes like crazy, this is going to go to Vicious in two rounds. But here we go. One last volley. Mozzie up to Chrome. Chrome handling this one in the trap under pressure. Still manages to sneak it through to A. A fires the shot, but sweet tooth. What a save there. Gets the grab. Gets the clear. Oh my goodness. Gets the shot. What? 69 meters out hello what a nice shot <laughs> oh my goodness you know I, I saw it going that direction i was like no way and then of course it just pops right in there nice beautiful play by vicious as they take <laughs> a very very solid lead here in round two with us you know that's why we're that's why they're that's why they're number one right now i mean you can't deny 
play like this. A gonna send it right back into the hands of Mozzie. Mozzie gonna send it all the way forward to KJ. KJ back to Mozzie again as Mozzie moves into the bubble. Gonna sink it in, but Sweet Tooth gonna deny that goal, sending it right back through the midfield all the way down. And that's going to be uh, anyone's disc right now as it's just floating there. Sweet Tooth picks it up, open goal. No one's home, gonna send it in to Matthew for the, the thievery, I believe, there between Matthew and Zach. Yeah, a couple different players trying to steal that one at the end. Uh, 23 to nine is the scoreline right now. And uh, Sweet Tooth, uh, that is a name we've been saying a lot in the last couple of minutes on the back line there, uh, putting in work on the goal, not letting Vital get anything together. They go for the headbutt play just to see if they can't get something off quick. They do a good job, they move it down. There's an open goal and Vital will get the last score, which means something somewhere to someone. They'll take what they can get. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a different community group you're thinking of there, offbeat. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, getting the last points does feel good. And uh, so, but with that in mind, still, congratulations to Vicious. What an incredible performance there in two rounds uh, to take that one into. You could tell that they were hungry for it, and they certainly earned it with that score line. Oh, my goodness. But, I mean, that is, that is not a dig at Vital at all. They played so, so well. But that Vicious speed is just, it, it, it's, a, it's a force to be reckoned with here. I mean, it, we saw it last season when they went all the way to that final match. We've seen it this season here leading up to this match. Uh, it, it'll be interesting. Interesting to see how far that carries them in the postseason because I don't think there's any doubt that we will be seeing Vicious there. Yeah, Vicious is definitely a solid team. And I do want to shout out real quick, Zach W in this game tonight is the only player across both teams that had points all the way across the board. Five points, five assists, a save, and a steal. And of course, lots of stuns. But, uh, you know, it's, just, it's nice to see well-rounded players and when they come in and they're able to, to get points everywhere that that definitely says something about them as a player so kudos for that and a, a beautiful win by vicious uh this is gonna be an exciting se season for them yeah absolutely well deserved uh and they're they're playing uh you know top form right now right the the top of their game uh currently uh 15 i am reading this right 15 and 0 on the season have yet to drop a single match so far um it's it's been it's been a year uh for them to say the least they're coming in here with some consistency right uh, a lot of teams in the higher ends tend to you know kind of bounce and jump around they've stuck together and look they're seeing the results early on here uh huge congrats to them for sticking it out and for and the results are showing themselves here they're on a roll and it's really on them uh right now as to when that roll stops 100 percent but that is our final match of the evening so one more time shout outs to eterna to cicada to blue x arena rats vicious and vital here playing these matches for us to watch thank you so much jeep girls and offbeat uh joining me in the booth this evening and off i'm sorry and wonder team man of course running the stream running the cams doing everything to make this stream actually possible and uh that is gonna do it here for us on channel one so until next time stay happy stay healthy and stay safe. Good night.
Season 7 of VRML Echo Arena is brought to you by HyperX, Asterion Products, VR Cover, ProTube VR, Arma.gg, Kiwi Design, Downpour Interactive, and VRWare.net.